I'm, I'm still new to the podcast thing. Yeah. Um, and it's probably because you spend so much time in a car with the, you know, the same three dudes <laughs> that there's a point where you've told all your stories. That's right. Yeah. And you start being like granddad and grandma who are just <laughs> telling the same shit over and over again. All sitting there in silence. <laughs> yeah. So you kind of, we've started doing like podcasts and um, audio books. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. And being very Disney and, you know, <laughs> educating ourselves on the way to gigs and from, to and from. I kind of like to have a look at the woman and see, uh, you know, because I am such a novice in the music industry <laughs> Are you? yeah i just right? i don't know much about anything i don't know many people but i <laughs> but i really uh it, i suppose i feel like a teenager discovering right what the hell's out there <laughs> and i kind of love to see what the ladies are doing it's it's yeah and i love the podcast i really enjoyed them oh thank you yeah yeah it's awesome yeah, yeah we we um we sort of fell over it in a way oh um, yeah like, like we'd never had any, amb- I, ne- I personally never had any ambition to be a podcast person. Yeah. I don't know exactly how I ended up here, <laughs> but, um, cause I've, I'm a musician, you know, that's what yeah. I've always done. And, yeah. um, and Bobby, uh, Kennedy, who I started the show with, yeah. um, he's stepped out at the moment cause he's got a three month, three year old baby. Oh yeah. Fair um, enough. Yeah. 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 And it's the second one in two years. Um, mm. so he's had Mass a bit- production. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, um, quite understandably he's taken a minute. Yeah. Um, fair enough. but we, we were touring together and, um, we decided that well, we were talking about how young people really didn't have access to good information. Yeah. Um, and industry advice is just usually a bit twisted. Yeah. You know, or or it's going to gender, or it's safe because they don't want to say the wrong thing or yeah. whatever. So it's really hard for people to get access to the right um, kind of mentoring, if you like. Yeah. And what the other thing that we we're talking about is when you're touring around in the car like you were describing mm. or like after the gig in the hotel lobby or whatever you're doing mm. that's when the interesting shit comes out <laughs> yeah and, yeah and and we thought well, why don't we record that yeah you know so that's kind of the premise for it it's funny you say young people because uh as a broad sweeping statement yeah i yeah. love yeah. it though because <laughs> yeah. because we were uh, well i was fairly young in the music industry when we came up with this idea to do Whitechapel Jack. Right. And so it was it was all discovery. We knew not one single person who was a full time musician. Right. Um and so we went on this journey of finding information on how we did this. We knew that that's what we wanted to do. Mm. Um but we didn't know how and we didn't know and it didn't really matter if it was possible. But what did you want to do? Uh to be a full time musician and love it. Right. So the concept of what Whitechapel Jack became is that that sort of evolved later i think initially you just wanted to play music yes right for the love of it yeah and get paid for it Mm. so it was the key isn't it the last bit (laughs) yeah Yeah. it was money last (laughs) yeah i i always i kind of look at it as money's in the vehicle but money's not driving right the the passion for playing so Mm. i loved playing music and i wanted to do it all the time yeah and get paid for it right so that was just the back seat. Yeah. Still in the car. Right. Car needed to go. Of course. Yeah. Car needed to work. Well, it's yeah. funny, I, but I, because I had the same goal when I was starting out, and mm. I was I was wrestling with the same um, puzzle, like how do I put this together? Mm. And it was an, it was actually another musician that sort of turned the light on for me and how to do it. Yeah. Um, when when he did it, and I'm like, tell me everything. Yeah. You know? um, yeah. But I what I think is funny is how unlike almost any other industry, we're constantly having to grapple with this balance between the money and the love mm. where we feel like we have to justify it for some reason. Yeah. Like why do we have to justify getting paid? I think because you're told right. that passion, you lose it when you're paid for it. That's right. Yeah. You're yeah. told that. So you're supposed to give what you're passionate about for free. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's a weird thing in our um, industry. And I started to wonder recently if that's something that, is encouraged by the people on the business end of the industry because it could be it could be said that it, it's to their advantage if we stay dumb absolutely yeah yeah i think um i think too it's our own our, our own acceptance of what it is it's, mm. i mean you're told lots and lots of things but there's a point where you have to think for yourself that's right and there are obviously people making a living there are obviously people beyond the superstars beyond the big peeps that's right there are other people who are making a fantastic living and making plenty of money to live a great lifestyle Mm. and 
what they still have passion in, but we're blind to it. We're told, not, oh, no, that's not right. That's, that's right. not real. That's not real. All of this is real, but yeah. that's not real. But the ironic thing is, is that what we do is exactly in that space. It's right. passion and money's in the car. And we make, I don't know, it depends on if I are listening. We make <laughs> a lot of money. Right. We make a bucket load of money. Yeah. More than I thought we would. My goal was to, to make a million dollars in one year. Wow. That's my goal. Just because <laughs> right. I've always wanted to earn a million dollars. <laughs> it's, just a, it's just a silly number. Yeah. Um, if you take the power out of money, then money becomes just nothing. Right. So it's a silly number, but we are on our way to that number. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> That's quite amazing. And you're told all the time, even though we are performing a lot, even though we do what we do, mm. we, we are continuously told that there's no money in the industry. Right. And we're yeah. like, That's weird because... We seem to be finding it. Well, also the other thing that doesn't add up with that is that there's this entire infrastructure of the industry that are only there for money. Yeah. You know what I mean? The, the yeah. Most of the music industry aren't musicians. Yeah. And they're in business taking home salaries or whatever. So if someone's getting paid. Someone is, and I think we are. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah. that's because we created our own universe. Right, yeah. I think we worked in isolation of the industry. Yeah, yeah. Not knowing the restrictions, not knowing what everyone else did. I felt like we created our own wheel. I think that's smart, though, because I think one of the problems in the music industry is that we keep recreating the same idea. Like, we, we keep using the same template. Yeah. But the template hasn't arguably been relevant for the longest time because yeah. the template that existed in the 60s, for example, mm. many bands are actually still pursuing that. Yeah. The Kind of the rock star romanticism, you know. And yeah. it, and, and the world has changed. I've been in changed. those, I've been well, in those We bands. all have, you yeah. know. But the world's yeah. changed so many times over. Yeah. You know, you have to rethink it. But, we, but so many musicians just sort of oh we'll put the band together and we'll get a record contract and it'll be sweet yeah and that's 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 buying that 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 dream that's sold to you Mm, that's right that it's it's one performance it's one show the break one person it's the break and there's i i mean there are multiple ways to your dream there are Mm. multiple there's not just one there's not one template there's not one way there's multiple ways to it and that is one way yeah the break but it's and it's very rare though it's yeah. like it's like the lottery yeah exactly yeah. yeah rare but real yeah but we're told that that's the only way that's or right. that's the way and so you buy that dream mm. um and then you wait f- for that break but i think uh what we did was we made our own break we weren't waiting right. for anyone to discover us yeah when you play for the passion of it and know that you're going to get paid yeah then the passion always drives it. And so my, I think I first became aware of you guys uh, maybe about four or five years ago. Mm. Um, and that was when I you know, people started chattering. Have you yeah. heard this band? Yeah, you know? weird, eh? And I don't know if that, I don't know how long ago the band actually started, but that's sort of when I first heard of it. About six, seven S- okay, years. So, so, so we're yeah. kind of in our seventh year. Right. Yeah. And so I, and I actually saw you guys play, I was just attending a function and you were just doing like a, a, a gig, just yeah. like background yeah. corporate function, like yeah, we yeah. all do, you know? Yeah. Um, and I was like, oh, they're pretty cool. And then just in the background, while I've been doing my own thing, I've just noticed the, the over there, you guys have just grown. Yeah. yeah <laughs> and I'm thank like, you. what the fuck? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. And so, I'm, I mean, almost every band or artist in the country is trying to figure out how to get traction and how to, how yeah. to get conversion. Yeah. Um, you know, we constantly focus these days on things like likes, Facebook likes, YouTube mm. clicks, all mm. that kind of stuff. All mm. the stuff that doesn't convert into anything real. Yeah. And in the meantime, you guys have gone from being... Uh, I'm guessing an unknown little band mm. to selling out venues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, cool. where, so cool. where, where did it start? And who, and was this a collective thing, or did, is this you, you know? Did you come up with the idea, and, or yeah. did someone else in the band? Who's the brainchild behind it? I think it, it was my dream. Yeah. Um, and it was about you know uh, playing music mm-hmm. and getting paid. Right. And simply to play music, I love the way that it felt. Yeah. Um, but I didn't really really focus on it until my mid 30s right um which meant that all of my learning life learning i mean i don't think you really know yourself until you're 50 60 years old <laughs> you know so i'm i'm still learning but right. i feel like a lot of my mistakes and learnings yeah. were, were already 
done. Yeah. 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 So a lot of my learnings in life were, were done through uh, my career. So retail management and then off to, um, I made it to the, you know, the, the big, the big office. Um, right. and the corporate did, office. Yeah, the corporate office. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, um, and started uh, change management. And right. That type of thing. That's so, a completely different world. How oh did my you, Lord. How did you deal with all the bullshit of the corporate world? You know what? When you're in it. Just like any other world, you're sold into it right. and you believe in it and it has its own ecosystem. Yeah. And you are part of that ecosystem. Were you playing in bands as well, like on uh, the side? Not, not, yeah, I was, but nothing, like a hobbyist and right. barely, I see. barely a hobbyist. So you were very much in that corporate, you know, world I think mentality. I liked money. <laughs> <laughs> Well, money does get you things. You know, I came from quite a poor background and I enjoyed having money and it was exciting and I loved people. Um, What what was the, where did you grow up? uh, Gisborne. Oh, yep. Uh Yeah. So I went to the same school Jackie Clark did Ah. and she was a couple of years ahead of me. So it was really cool listening to her podcast with you. Yeah. Because I was like, oh, another Gizzy girl. (laughs) Gizzy hod. Um, (laughs) And I think when you're in that world, it's, a lot of people say, I suppose you're just working for the machine. Right. Yeah. And yeah. you have your place and in order to work up in that machine. Yeah. I mean, you've got to believe it. Well, I mean, I think I remember talking to her and or asking her about how do you get your head out of the mentality. If the, if the place you live in has a kind of defeatist mentality, and mm. I don't know if that's true or not, yeah. but if it is true mm. um, on, in any way, how yeah. do you get your head out of that to go, I'm actually going to go further? Yeah. You know? I don't think... Uh, I I had a great mum. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I had a great mum who, I get, you know, still didn't really make it through high school, mm-hmm. um, but had a, had an incredible work ethic. Right. Um, and what did your mum do? Uh, she baked bread for wow. Woolworths. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then uh, she had uh, a prosthetic hip problems with her hip, so right. she would work from home. Mm-hmm. And we grew up on the DPB, but my mother would have veggie gardens out the back. Right. She would bake, um, yeah. cut hair. Um, so she was very much, uh, we're going to do it on our own. And she made her life. Oh, yeah, yeah totally. That's brilliant. Yeah. yeah. And she's a real, a real worker. So yeah. I think that's where you... I got it from, and I actually just stayed in school for music, and I went through yeah. the seventh form and became a prefect. I can't believe it. <laughs> prefect. I cannot believe it. <laughs> That's so unrock and roll. It's so Disney, <laughs> um, but it was awesome, and and like I was achieving things that I never thought that someone like me could achieve. Right. And then went on to varsity and did business. Right. Okay. So that's clever. Hilarious. Yeah, but it make, but it makes sense though because I mean Does I had it? someone um well someone emailed me a few years ago and said my nephew or something is wanting to become a musician mm. what do you think they should study yeah and I and I wrote back and said they're probably not going to listen to me but I think they should study business yeah you know because what you learn about music if you go to a music degree I mean you can what's that going to do yeah you know um like Jackie Clark said when was the last time you hired a drummer because he had a fucking degree yeah <laughs> which I thought and was I, great you know. And the business side of music is quite an interesting side. And because yeah. I spent a lot of my years in it, um, uh, retrospectively, what a mm. great decision. But yes. during the time, what a dumb decision. <laughs> How boring. You spend your 20s like learning business. But I only did it because I got a scholarship. Right. Okay. I had no aspirations at all. Zero. I didn't. I loved playing music, but I was pretty much told right from the get-go, you're never going to be a full-time musician. Yeah. Don't even look at it. So did you have different aspirations or you just had no aspirations? None. <laughs> I just love life. Floating through just life. Just floating through yeah, life. Right. Um, but then as everything that I got into, I, sp- I, I would really get into. Yeah. So, it, uh, yeah, I didn't really have a lot of goals. Right. Yeah. I find that hard to relate to. I was always <gasps> so ambitious. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Well, like, I, well, I don't know, I, but it's a miserable life sometimes. Uh, I am yeah. now, though. Yeah. Now. I mean, I think in the last 10 years, mm. uh, I've become obsessed with music and I've never right. been obsessed with anything since my sexuality but were you obsessed with music uh, as a fan as a listener no as a, which is the white chapel jack thing which right. is obsessed with the idea that i could be a full-time musician yeah and then moving on to oh how are you actually doing all right yeah and then doing the big leap from full-time secure work mm. to leaving that job and going full-time into music but i mean when you were a kid though did you have like favorite albums and favorite artists like were you were you obsessed with you know i can't you know? remember Remember, right. I, I have very clouded memories. I know that I remember the feeling. Right. 
I remember the way the albums made me feel. Right. Well, that's yeah. something. And yeah. the emotion that I felt and how I got lost in it. And mm. in high school, music was everything to yeah. me. I mean, yeah. in seventh form, I was at year 13. Uh, it, don't it? ask me. It was still seventh form yeah, when I was there. Yeah, <laughs> um, oh, Well, it's just my drink bottle. Oh, yeah. um, uh, that was when... Uh, I did everything to do with music. I was so just mm. full on into it. I I did I, I played the drums, so oh, yeah. I was a drummer in the choir, the orchestra. I don't know why I was doing that. <laughs> Little mouldy girl playing frickin' tambourine. Well, me. didn't they tell you to do it? And that's what happened to me. I, I played um I played percussion in the orchestra too, and I oh, did you? fucking hated it. <laughs> I thought it was hilarious. This is bullshit. You know? I was like, yeah, but I kind of felt quite flash. <laughs> I was like, this is so flesh. <laughs> even though I was doing the monkeyest bit that I thought, because I, I think I even got stopped in this, like, when the Gisborne YMCA, there was all the orchestras, or the, I think there's three or four high schools, and I was doing the triangle, and there was apparently, I don't know, a bit that was quite, <laughs> quite important. <laughs> and I was like, because I was mucking about too much, I keep missing it, so the conductor stopped too, so that I may nail... The triangle. The, the triangle in this <laughs> poignant bit. And I just remember thinking, you're a dick. I mean, I was such a whore. I mean, it's, oh, yeah, but I loved, I loved all that. Right. I remember having tonsillitis in the school production playing the drums, lying on the drums, because I was the only one who knew how to do it. Yeah. And, but still going, there's no other place I'd rather be. Right. Yeah. 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 Isn't that cool? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I loved it. Yeah. I have those memories too. I've been like 13 playing in the concert band and we did a gig in Matter Matter and I was like, we're on tour. <laughs> I'm like, a, you know, traveling musician. <laughs> it was great. Yeah. Ah, I wish in my 20s. I just worked. Right. I just worked all my way through it. Yeah. Yeah. So you did. The, so how long was the business degree for? Uh, three years. Yep. Um... And then didn't really didn't I don't think I even finished it. <laughs> You're not sure you, you don't remember. <laughs> it, I'm pretty sure I, I think remember? I fell in love, and then I was oh, doing, got distracted. I got distracted. Ah, um, right. And then left that. Uh, I think it must have been the last three months months of the degree, which is really silly. Yeah. Um, and then got a job as a retail manager, right. which I thought, oh, doesn't that dovetail in nicely? <laughs> um, and then spent the next ten years working my ass off. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 how long did you were you in retail before you went into that corporate? scene oh it must have been about 10 years oh yeah, yeah. i did learn stretch. about people though yeah that was amazing mm. i loved people right loved developing and then i learned the love of systems yeah which is so anti-creative well it's interesting because i i remember um an interview with sting where he because he didn't i don't think he was he i think he was like 27 or 28 or something before mm. the police blew up and he was saying that he had a whole life before he was yeah. famous, you know, and he, he worked, he was, I think he was a school teacher or something. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. And he had just normal life, a car that kept breaking down and he couldn't pay the bills. And he had this sort of normal <laughs> existence way before he became a rock star. Yeah. And he's always credited that for anchoring him ah. ra rather than if he had become famous at 18, he would have had very little to draw on, you know, it would have been this very superficial and weird world that he existed in. And I, I, I tend to agree. Mm. Um, I mean, what what we've achieved, I, I'm pretty sure would have taken a lot longer. Yeah. If we weren't as old as old, <laughs> uh, other word. Or maybe not even have happened. Be yeah. Because you know, the, the, it sounds like you have a very pragmatic approach. Yeah. And I think that's something that comes with experience. Yeah. Yeah. And I. Uh, you know what? And in the same breath, God, I would have loved to spend my 20s in the music world <laughs> rather than retail. Oh, no, bless retail. Right. I learned a lot from it, but jeez. Oh, I did retail for a minute. I hated it. Ah, <laughs> retrospectively, I hate it. Yeah. Um, but during it, I learned a lot of really cool life lessons. I mean, yeah. I met some really amazing people. Right. Um, and it actually helps with what we're doing. Right. So dealing with clients. Yep. um Managing the band, selecting the members mm -hmm. is uber important. Yes, is absolutely. what I've 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 learnt through building teams. Yeah, um, yeah. And I feel like the White Chapel Jackers. I've cracked it. Right. The, this is the well. I think the evidence group of amazing speaks to that, people. doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. What What kind of person were you in the in, in your twenties? Were oh, you like shy or something? Were you outgoing or a little bit? Yeah, yeah. I still had a personality behind me, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah. 
all through high school. I think there was always that performer inside of me. Right. Yeah. 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 Because that's something I've heard about. Um, you know, your stage presence is is so powerful. Yeah. Thank you. And and I and I I know from my own experience that that's something you have to learn how to do. Yeah. I mean, and you can I, you can be outgoing, yeah. but that doesn't automatically translate to stage performance. No, you know. No. Yeah. And you you've uh, I I'm really proud of it. Right. As you should be. And that's because it's super new to me. Yeah. Like, like this last seven years and the opportunity I've gotten to, to actually be myself on stage mm. is so new that I'm so, I'm still in honeymoon stage of it. <laughs> I think it's so cool. Yeah. I think it's really neat that on the spot I can do certain things because it's all just, it's just so fresh. Right. Maybe 25 years from now, you know, I'll be like, Ugh. <laughs> But right now I'm on the honeymoon stage and I love it. I think it's awesome. I love I love the reaction of the crowd. I love yep. that I can feel them mm-hmm. and and move them and then we all move together and we have moments together and yep. the genuine moments yeah. of connection. Um it's all so fresh. So how did the is it the same lineup now than it started out being? Um the guitarist Nathan Boston, yep. he is one of the original members, but the bass players changed out. We started with Dwayne Dyack, who right. was part of an original band that right. I was in. Yeah. Um, and so we've swapped out for Michael White. Well, um, I assumed he must be an original member because I assumed his name was something to do uh, with the name. <laughs> the name, ironic, it's just nothing. It, right. It, it's three random words that I got out of a book um, <laughs> that I flicked the page put the finger down, white, flick the page, right. chapel, flick the page, Jackson. And I didn't like the word Jackson only because it didn't flow. And yeah. so we did Jack. And so we just wanted to put meaning to it with the way that we play music. Right. So it had nothing to do with anything. Well, that's always the thing with band names, isn't it? You mm. agonize and agonize and agonize. And then someone always says, it doesn't matter. Yeah. In the end, people will associate you with whatever you do. Exactly. I mean, what the hell is a Pearl Jam? Yeah. You it's, know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think for us too, we didn't want it to. Uh, we didn't want it to. You know the 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 trio. I don't know brown fellas. I don't. You know, <laughs> you know one brown girl and three white guys. I don't. Know, we didn't want that. So that it meant something. Like visually, right. you could see. Oh, I see. Um, and it and it kind of uh, when we went, uh, we went through it quite a pragmatic way of getting it we all came up with ideas and yeah we whittled it down to the last two and then Whitechapel jack won and when i went to buy the domain mm. Whitechapel jack is a jack the ripper site oh cool, <laughs> cool. What, how does that work no oh, because he he did his killings in Whitechapel. we found out oh is that oh because that's a suburb in england yeah right yeah right, right. and okay. so well, that's why we're jak and not jack oh right because we so, figured he's been dead for ages yeah and the only people who know a a ripologist that's a jack the ripper lover right i don't know why I, <laughs> it's quite scary yeah when they approach you cool yeah uh, love your love um <laughs> and <laughs> and yeah um we kind of just figured we'll just run with it we yeah. we yeah. like the name we like that there's this you know possible person named jack and there's not really right. um uh but then there actually is a guy named jack <laughs> <laughs> and he killed a woman um yeah. but, but only english people and ripologists you know anyone from england yeah. ripologists know so we kind of just never figured, have occurred to me oh. yeah yeah. So the the actual um the the band obviously is an unconventional mm. band in many ways with the yeah. suitcase kick drum and and so yeah. on. Well, I, I always wondered is this something that um evolved out of like you did a small gig somewhere and we don't we can't be very loud <laughs> so we'll just use the small gear or, so, or was it thought out? Oh, I think it was it was thought out. We right. wanted acoustic instruments and mm-hmm. interesting and different uh from our perspective because we all came from electric bands. Right. And it was Dean Tinning, the drummer, who came later on a couple of years into it. Yeah. Uh, where we started doing more party sets and we needed some percussion. We needed some drive, but we didn't know what that looked like. Yeah. So we met him uh, in Napier through opening up for their band. So would, it, would you say it was like a response to, to the options in the local scene? I mean, what I mean by that is it's getting harder and harder to have big loud drums these mm. days because venues are built so terribly for drums yeah you know so it makes a lot of sense to me that quieter genres are getting ahead and yeah. the big rock bands are uh, really struggling i i think for us yes because mm. we we did in our original bands a few small little you know shows and tours 
and and we did have that issue yeah um, especially when you've got a loud drummer yeah um which we did yep. um and we, w- we wanted something more interesting mm. um and i think it was happening anyway a lot of people were using you know percussion and yeah um especially in their acoustic sets on uh, on radio stations when they come in you wouldn't bring the full band you'd right. have an acoustic set yeah um so we just thought what a great idea to do that full time because mm. we already got a double bass and a classic guitar and a steel string guitar acoustic yeah. and so we just gave it to dean tinning and said uh come with whatever you think would suit us and right. our sound. Yeah, yeah. Um, And so he found someone online that he was like, oh, cool, this dude is using a suitcase. So he turned up uh, to the practice and we were like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh, mm, fucking hell, what the hell is that? That's <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, but when we mic'd it up, yeah. oh, just amazing. Right. Incredible sound. And the yeah. overall acoustic concept of the band, had, was this something that came from influences somewhere or was this purely just a, an idea? Purely just an idea. Right. Yeah. yeah. To see what would come out. There was lots of electric bands around mm. and um, we found that it worked. Yeah. Yeah. The more we played it, we went between electric sometimes, electric guitar, but we found that the acoustic worked and then we just settled in. Well, it solves a lot of problems, doesn't it? Even even for you as a singer, having to sing over a oh, snare drum and cymbals yeah. and things, suddenly that problem goes away. Yeah. Again, if we had better venues, we would have our sound contained better and so on. Yeah. And if we had better monitors, then yeah. we'd be able to sing better. And But, <laughs> you know, yeah. I, I know myself, you come back from a gig sometimes and it's like you can't talk anymore, you know, and your, no. your, your ears are shot because you've yeah. had all these crashing banging <laughs> you know yeah you can't, so playing quieter gigs um makes a hell of a lot of sense to me yeah and we yeah. can be quite loud funnily enough mm. now that we're playing bigger gigs right like uh hearing that suitcase at spark arena is just mind-blowing <laughs> you're like i don't even what is happening but that's a different kind of loud isn't it because oh, yeah. because that's loud through a bigger system and also the, yeah. the loud meaning energy yeah yeah so that doesn't necessarily mean it's like a shotgun going i off. think for us though we're like ooh, so flesh <laughs> i mean everything that's happened in the band has been you know you come up with a concept yeah you get a great team and you just start playing right and now at and i mean I don't think we'd say that now, but back in the day, yeah, in the beginning, we would play to a brick wall. Right. <laughs> we were so excited about what we were doing. <laughs> we would play to anything and anyone because it wasn't the reaction that we were getting excitement from. It was what we were doing ourselves. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. We loved what we were doing, that we were doing it so often. Yeah. I remember thinking in the first year, I'm going to play music until I'm sick of it. Right. Yeah. And I didn't know if that was possible. Oh, it is. Trust me. <laughs> I found out. <laughs> I found out. Um, but it's kind of nice because I remember that as well. I mean, that's kind of what what it's like with when you're a kid learning to play. You're exactly. just so excited to make the sound yeah. and to make the sound with someone else. And I was yeah. like, hey, that actually sounds good. Yeah. That, that works, you know. I mean... I definitely feed off an audience reaction. You oh, know, totally. and, and if for some reason I'm getting a flat reaction, I, my performance is never as good. Yeah. And it annoys me because I, I would ideally, idealistically like to think that I could surpass that you know, yeah. and, and just get back to that connection. And, yeah. and I try to all the time, like forget the environment, just play the music. But it's quite hard to achieve that. I think it's because you've had a taste of it. I mean, we, yes, we're transitioning right. through to that. Right. Because we started out with, everything is awesome you know <laughs> yeah, running yeah. around uh saying yes to everything you yeah. know doing 150 gigs a year and just thinking it's incredible mm. um to being a being able to be more selective now and the gigs are getting bigger and the responses as well yes so you get a little crowd drunk you mm. get a little bit loved up by it right. and so when you do the ones that aren't so it is interesting because you're like, yeah. you have a little like, oh, hang on, got to check myself. Yeah. Because it can't always rely on external forces because when you do, um, it becomes a job. Of course. And also the crowd drunk thing can, can sometimes uh, have a negative effect oh, yeah. on, on the internal dynamics in the band or, you know, maybe the musicianship starts to get sloppy. Oh, things like that. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, and I think we're just, I mean, because we're so new at being this full time thing, mm. I mean, cause seven years is nothing. I mean, no. I feel like we're still in primary school. <laughs> Because we're just uh, in, in our honeymoon phase because we're still very much enjoying it. But right. from from an, a life experience perspective, so we've, because we've come in at, at, at an, a, a, an older age, yeah. I mean, because we're in our 40s, yeah. um, 
we're a little bit more, I suppose, just experienced in life. And so finding that way through this excitement is, is, is very, very cool. I wonder if you can appreciate it more as well because you have that life experience. Maybe, because I, 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 I've lived both lives. I, yeah. well, I, I'm sure there's more than two. I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure there's more than No, there's only two. I know there's yeah. more than you know, work life and, and passion life. It's either music or retail. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, a, that's, that's it. That's the only it. options. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because I, I think because I've lived those, those two lives, yeah. um, it has been... I, I, yeah, it's well, been, uh, you, I love it. I think it's incredible. It's the best yeah. life ever. Well, I mean, you know, there are musicians out there who opportunities come to them very young mm. and it comes a little easy mm. and they take it for granted yeah. and they fuck it up, Yeah, you know, and and all of us who have worked our ass off are over here going, what the fuck is wrong with them? They've got yeah. this great opportunity and they've just gotten shit faced and fallen off the stage. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. I totally get that. I'd love to be naming people right now. But <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, though, I think the coolest thing about what we're doing is that uh, every year we have a little get together and go, right, uh, that's Nathan and I, mm. um, and go, right, what was our year like? Where are we heading? What right. are our goals? Yeah. Which is why we keep growing as a band. Yeah. That that even though we're doing cool stuff, that's not the end and it's not the pinnacle. And I don't believe there is a pinnacle. I just, I, I just go, cool. What do I want to do next? Yes. Exactly. What do I feel like? Yeah. Personally, not what's good for what's happening. And hmm. I mean, cause, because we would be focusing, if it was money, we'd be focusing on weddings and corporates because we're making a bucket load off those. Right. You know? Yeah. And our own shows, we're starting to make some actually some incredible money from them right um and <laughs> it's not often we have artists come in here and say these things i know <laughs> i just want to be honest we are we're That's making great. good money no it's great we're making fantastic money from our shows and 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 we're still incredibly reasonably ticketed yeah um and but we're just low production cost um mm -hmm. we're uh, increasing we got a lighting lady now right <laughs> <laughs> <Woo -hoo>. um <laughs> But, you know, it's about get, getting to bigger shows for us, bigger festivals, bigger venues. Yeah. But we kind of reached that point where we're selling out 400 venues, 400 people venues. Now, there's, there's a massive step to the next one. Yes, it's that's like, right. And so yeah. we're like, okay, in order to get there, we need to change up what we're doing. Right. And, yeah. So the when you started the band, though, you couldn't have had any idea it was going to work so well, right? <laughs> I don't. I knew it would. Really? Yeah. yeah. Right. I knew it would because uh, otherwise I wouldn't be doing it. Interesting. I D knew in my heart that it was going to be incredible. I didn't know what form that would take. Wow. I knew we would be. This experience would be amazing, but it was. I think it's been my belief in that that has, when things get a little hard or mm. things don't go so well. Yeah. I just. I just go, well, that's nothing. That's something to learn from. Keep, like, there's that goal Keep over there. Keep moving forward. That's yeah. where it is. And that's cool. And, yep, that was crap, but that is now gone and over and done right. with. Well, that's interesting because, of, of course, you couldn't actually have known the future. So you couldn't have known. Yeah. But having that in your head that way yeah. has obviously helped you make different decisions maybe yep. than, than being fearful or... Or, yeah. or negative or whatever. So everything that comes along that feels that way that I knew it would feel cool, we're yeah, off. Yeah. I mean, because I've, I've had to, in the last year, uh, let go of managing the band, which was um, quite a transition in mm. my head, but I had just overworked myself. So right. I was managing and booking the band. So Nathan and I co-manage. Um, and then I did all the marketing. I did uh, all the lead chasing. Such a I, big job. Oh, everything. It was just yeah. so humongous. But in the first six years, five years, I was loving it. Right. I thought everything was awesome. I And <laughs> everything that I gave to it, I absolutely loved it. Every, every lesson that I learned was incredible. Yeah. I just had, I was having a great time. And then it got to the point where in order to move the band forward, I need to focus more on my performance. Right. And also we're looking at uh writing songs i have no time i have absolutely no time between performing 150 gigs a year yeah and managing those 150 gigs plus the other three to four hundred inquiries that we get and turn down right you know it it's it's a massive massive job so how do you find the right manager because that's a key thing to get right isn't it oh i married her oh right <laughs> I didn't think of that. <laughs> we have this incredible luck. I don't know if it's luck, but I think when you find like-minded people 
um, with the same worth ethic and yeah. the same morals and the same, I don't know, way of being in life. We are all very different, but there are some real core personalities yeah. that or traits that line up. That's right. That has to be the way, doesn't oh, it? Oh, has, yeah, has to be. It's it's what and and I think that's what retail taught me is to build a good team. Yeah. It's it's the members that make that good team and then you just you just shape them. And you give them an environment where they, they can grow. Right. Um, but if you have the wrong person in the wrong place, mm. it doesn't matter how much time you spend on it. Mm. It's it's never going to fit. That's right. Mm. Because, I mean, as, as fun as it all is, it's also a very high-pressure job. Oh, and, yeah. and we're all at our, our end most yep. of, a lot of the time. Tired, yep. for you know, late nights, long drives, yep. hungry, yep. headaches, too hot, too cold. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Shitty, it, shitty hotels, yeah. or, you know. And you're, yeah. and you're deep in that. You know, because a lot of your time is spent, but you know, six to seven months. Yeah, you you do a majority of those gigs. Mm. Um, when you're reaching the end of it, that's when you know how much you love each other. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> because in your at your worst, you still get up there. You're still respectful yep. to each other, mm-hmm. um, and you give it what you've got. It may not be as good as the beginning of the season, but right. you give it what you got, and you're loving and supportive to each other. Of course, you get yeah. A little bit pissed off at the bass player all the time because I can bass players. <laughs> God damn it! No, <laughs> they are such easy targets. It's yeah. not their fault, and they just go for them. You know, no. Um, you know, you know, in those moments that you've picked the right team, that yeah. you're in the right team, that you're surrounded by the right people. That's right. Um, that's what, in those moments you know. And my point, waffling off, <laughs> is um, that. We all have incredible partners yes. and wives. Right. So it's a real family affair, this. Um, and it's not because they're our loved ones. It's because they're actually incredibly good at what they do. Right. So all of our design work is done by Natalie Bonfield, which is Nathan's partner. Mm-hmm. And she does all our design work, our website. Wow. Um, cool. She, started, she was the starting of our photography and then she... You know, got amazing friends who do photography, so she does that. Yeah. Um, my wife comes from a strategic background, so that, that was going to be my question. Did, yeah. Did she have a background in band management? Not in band management, right. no, yeah. but in corporate management okay, and right. managing portfolios and teams mm. and marketing. So yes. she was, she's an amazing marketer, right? And has worked for some pretty big companies. So she has always helped us along the way mm. um, to you know, steer the, the ship of Whitechapel Jack. Yeah. Um, which is probably why we look so good. It's because it's not because of us, it's because we've got amazing partners and wives. <laughs> um but then it got to the point where it's like, uh, we need a full time manager. Yeah. Um and so she said, Give me three months, um, and we'll come up with this amazing plan. Right. Um and we had enough money to pay for her. Are we ah, you know what? We don't have enough money to pay for her. <laughs> but, but what we give her plus her benefits she gets, um <laughs> <laughs> things things worked out so for that three months we came up with the plan for the last two years mm. where things are starting to get pretty amazing and then so she's still working in another she, job as well she does uh, she has her own production company oh, okay, and she's right. done a bit of tv work and stuff like that ah, um, so she knows she really knows what she's doing yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. i think so <laughs> yeah. yeah and i think i think we're really proud of our partners and, and what they give to us. Right. Um, and my sister does the bookings now, so she takes care of the bookings. Yep. Um, and they are all doing an incredible job, which contributes to us working towards that, moving to bigger venues, moving to albums, moving to bigger festivals. Yeah. You know, and... Uh, so you, you're saying you're, you're going to start uh, looking at writing originals soon? Mm. You've never done that before, right? No. Yeah. No. And, and and was that something that was sort of talked about in the oh, early days? Yeah. yeah, oh yeah, you know because covers covers bands get such a shit rap. Yeah, like no, oh, you know why don't you write your own stuff? I don't well, know how many times we yeah. hear that. You're like, ah, oh, and when you're in original bands, which is what we have all come from, right? Oh, why don't you play something we all know? And so we <laughs> kind of just figure we're just going to do what we want to do, what mm. feels good for us in the way that we do it. Yeah. Um, because, uh, and that we feel like we have something to say now. Well, the reason why I brought that up is because if you step away from the music industry and just look at any industry, mm. there's always got to be supply and demand, you mm. know, and there's got to be uh, a market out there that wants the thing that you're trying to sell. If yeah. there's no market for the thing you're trying to sell, you're not going to sell it, yeah. you know, and 
original music is really struggling these days mm. because it's so hard to create a demand for for what you're trying to do yeah for as an artist you know yeah. and I, and now i'm looking around the local sort of touring scene and more and more it seems to be covers bands yeah either tribute bands or yeah. whatever i um, think we're the only band which is doing as good as we are hmm. we call ourselves the original covers band <laughs> uh, like original cover band yeah um and that's simply because we just don't keep an eye on everything we just do yeah. what we do right you know and the original scene as well as when we write we're just going to write what we write and i mean we uh we love lab we're yep. just like in love with these kiwi bands that are coming out with this incredible music right um and we think ah well we've got a voice and uh, if we were driven by money uh, yeah. we would not but we're not we're driven by uh just the love of playing music but and, you, it, and you, i think it's time to do originals because we have financially the space yeah um and we have reduced the amount of gigs that we're doing and increased our income mm. which is which is i mean that's clever but uh, but you've also put yourself in a position where you can do originals yes. because you've established an audience yes and i think you're now at the point where an audience is going to be very positive and probably excited to hear what you guys write. Yeah, you know? yeah. I mean, and we've got great followers. We have. Yeah. I mean, because we're so connected to what we're doing, and yeah. uh, we have we've made really great friends out of people who come to our shows. We right. can almost see in a crowd of four hundred. We can. We almost know every single person. Yeah. We know that this person's come twice. We know, you know, maybe 15% of the people's names because mm. we've seen them on Facebook. I mean, let's not lie. We look at Facebook and see who's <laughs> following us and who's, I mean, and, and who's commenting and yeah. how cool. And then we flick on their thing and we're like, oh, that's so cool. Yeah, and, yeah. I mean, and then we get to meet them in person. And so we've built, I, have, I feel like we've built a genuine connection. This is not just about them buying tickets to our show mm. it's about that we have something in common right which is a common way of being so our yeah. shows when you come to our shows are full of happiness love and light right. and incredible fun and lots and lots of middle-aged drinking um <laughs> <laughs> you know and mums leave the kids at home yeah and they, you know yeah. they have a great time and they get a holiday home and they you know <laughs> spend the night um and you know and and for us that's kind of we love that yeah, yeah. we think it's we think it's awesome well it's funny because we um so far at least uh, in the podcast we've opened each year with a, a, a an episode but just bobby and i just talking about whatever yeah, yeah we did it again at the start of this year and somewhere in the middle there i went on this rant which i'm known <laughs> to do um where i was going fuck the industry don't play the game don't kiss ass mm. you know don't this 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 blah 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 blah. just do your own thing set up your own thing sell your own tickets build your own show and I'm blah, 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 right and um I'm still, I, 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 like, after the episode came out, I thought, I wonder if that's going to come back to bite me on the ass. <laughs> I know? think it's a great idea. But, but then I, as well as sort of, it was in my mind that we were going to record this, I was thinking, those guys have done exactly the thing I was ranting about, yeah. you know? Yeah. So if anyone gives me shit, I'll just, I'll just refer them to you. <laughs> we shall be the example. <laughs> you know, and I think and I think it's because because we didn't spend a lot of time in the industry and know the mistakes that everyone has made and, yeah, and, yeah. and the restrictions. Mm that you're told right. we just created whatever we wanted to create yeah and and it, you know what sometimes it's hard because you can see it and you know that if you change this that you would you would go over here or you know we'd, you'd make a bit more money over this way it, yeah. it, it can be a little bit difficult but i suppose when you keep touching the reason when you keep touching wood and touching the reason why you started what you did right then it helps to always adjust it i mean because we've adjusted it, our trajectory so much really? but it's because Sometimes we're like, nah, we don't really like that. Yeah. Yeah. So what kind we, of things? Though? We tried um, having residencies at bars. Oh, right. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. That's not for us. No. <laughs> Bless the people that do it. Yeah. Oh, you stallions. It's not common these days, though. I only I can only think of one band yeah. off the top of my head that's doing yeah. it. And I think maybe yeah. when we started way back when, uh, well, oh, seven years ago, <laughs> <laughs> in the olden days, yeah. um, there were lots of people, you know, that were having, I suppose the success for a covers band was a residency somewhere and we did right. try it, but we found it drove us nuts. Yeah. The, re the repetitive nature of it for us personally didn't mm. work. Mm. And Kiwis after 12. Oh, fuck that. Jesus. Yeah. I tell yeah. you what, you, ooh. Yeah. Yeah. It's like World War Z sometimes. They, you know, because you have the same audience, because we've done it lots 
to get to this conclusion. I always say you got to do something to mm. know. Yeah. You can go by other people's experiences, but unless you've done it yourself, you don't understand That's right. whether you like it or not. Yeah. So we did it and you can almost see the switch at one past 12. Yeah. Oh, yo, yo. Yeah. Oh, and and we just didn't. That just wasn't our bag. So we just, yeah. but we tried it, and so that so we decided, okay, that's not us. Even though it was good re- regular income, mm. um, we could do the same thing, charge more because bars don't pay as much as private events. Of course, yeah. Um, and yeah, and and we thought, yeah, we'll go this path. Well, I think it's a rite of passage in a way, you know. So it's, it, I always think of it as a young man's game doing mm. those shitty pub, um, pub gigs, and. Uh, Sometimes musicians are accused of being pedantic or precious or whatever. Oh yeah. But w- and you know sometimes they are. Yeah. You know? Oh yeah. Um, but sometimes they're not. Sometimes they're actually progressing mm. and, and they're actually saying to themselves, "Well, that hasn't worked. I yeah. want to figure out how to make this work better." Yeah. You know, and uh, if I mean I've so many times in the past, especially you know years in the past, been in a bar or something. I'm standing there with my PA. I, I need an hour to pack it down so I can't yes. run out of the venue. Yeah. You know, I'm certainly not going to leave it there because it's worth shitloads. Yeah. You know, all my gear. And I've got someone in my face who um, <laughs> has asked me to play a ridiculous song. I've said no. And now they want to start a fight. Yeah. And I'm like, what the fuck am I doing here? Yeah. You know, and I can't even go fuck this and leave because no. I've got to pack all my shit down. <laughs> no. All for the luxury of earning $200. Yeah. You know, yeah. and so eventually you kind of go, okay, I'm done with that. I want to move on to this other thing. And, yeah. you, you know, and then you experience toxic people or yeah. shitty situations. Yeah. And you, you're constantly trying to refine it. How have you dealt with that? Because you must have gone through all of that in a very concentrated yeah, amount of time, right? Yeah, enough. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was yeah. all new. Right. I mean, you know, learning that anyone who likes the song Wagon Wheel, yeah. if you don't play it, they get so aggressive. Right, Like, yeah. aggressive. Like, but they don't like, actually want to hear Wagon Wheel. <laughs> That's what I've realised. They just think it's funny to say it. Oh, I don't know, man. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we've played it so much. Have but, you? Oh, you actually do it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I, I think when, uh, when you look at the song, it's a fun song, um, but when you do it over and over again, it, mm. like anything, it gets repetitive. Mm. But I think for me, I have a little quirk with it because the people who ask are so rude. Right. And not all of them. Um, <laughs> but when I, I remember there was almost a, f- a freaking fight at a <laughs> wedding because we didn't know the song because I'm a moldy girl from freaking Gisborne. I don't <laughs> fucking know Wagon Wheel. I didn't even know the song existed. Right. But luckily, I'm surrounded by beautiful white men. And... Um, <laughs> I didn't know that song was racially, um, you know. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. It sounds like a Pagia song to me. I don't know. Um, and oh, so, it is. Yeah, it probably yeah. is. Yeah. Um, and our bass player, Michael White, he, he, he's he been in the covers uh, game in Wellington for years. Right. So he knew the song. He knew how to sing it. Yeah. He told us the chords. And it was almost the right because we were pretty firm on going, we don't know that song. You know, we're not a Spotify playlist. Yep. I mean, basically, we'd love to play whatever song that you want us to play, but we right. can't. Right. <laughs> we, well, we can't um, because we don't know it. Um, and when we played it, they were so elated, but they were getting so aggressive. Yeah. And then I just, from that point on, I just realized that anyone who asked for it and you didn't know it, they just got so angry, guy. So yeah. then I got a little quick in my head. I was like, if you get angry, guy. Just, just settle down. Like, well, yeah. how do you deal with it though? Oh, I've, I, I'm pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty good. But at But what being, do you mean you're good? Do you mean you're calm? Pretty good or, at or you're, firm at telling them. I see. Yes, we will play it. Right. Um, yeah. But we'll play it. You know. Right. Yeah, we'll play it when we're ready and when it suits the set. Yeah. <laughs> so just, chill, just, fun, just chill out, mate. Because I think, like, I think no matter how hard I try to to appease a situation like that, I always mm. come across as aggressive. <laughs> There's always like fuck you written right across my face. I you think know what that's I mean? years of retail for me. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, you know, you, you want to say fuck you, and they yeah. say that there is one fuck you in retail, right? Because your boss will never ever believe that you said fuck you because you've never said it in your life. <laughs> you, so you've got one. To you've you. got one fuck you. <laughs> yeah, where you got a client and you got or you got a customer and you just say, you know what, fuck you, fuck you very much, <laughs> piss off, and never come back. Yeah. But I've, I never used it. <laughs> right, right. So I've learned. To say things in a very firm way. Yeah. Um, in a situation. I think there was only one guy I had to tell off in Christchurch. Right. Who just wanted us to play it every single minute. Uh, and then when he didn't get it, he was quite toxic on the dance floor telling everyone. And then they would turn. And I, like, I don't mind if he wants it and he wants it all the time. I do mind when he starts turning the audience. And, yeah. And then they start getting weird and it's a real... 
I don't like the negativity of it. So then yeah. I, I told him off on the microphone and then, yeah. Good Not, on you. In, a, in, a, in a sort of school teacher kind of way. Still in a very <laughs> funny, ha ha, <laughs> shut up. Yeah, you know? right. Yeah. But then, you know. yeah. I, That's yeah. a skill though. I don't think I ever got that skill down. Uh, mine yeah. was practice. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's either, you know, bite your tongue and say it. And I remember telling one lady, I think <laughs> she was my last customer ever. And she was being quite rude. And she said, well, you know, hurry up. I want to get out of here. And I said, you know what? There is nothing I want more in this world than to get you out of my store. <laughs> so if you would just give me a minute. I would, you know, you know, I remember thinking, was that my fuck you? I'm so ripped off. I'm so ripped off. I should have just said fuck you. <laughs> As the band grows, do you find that these dramas start to to dissipate because people have more respect yeah and our crowds are more deliberate so yeah. they're there for us yeah. and they know us i suppose it's there's dating a crowd and then there's married to a crowd right. i feel yeah. like yeah i think i think we're in a long-term relationship we've just clicked over into the seven don't get the seven year inch team um <laughs> we've just clicked over into seven years and some people saw us the very you know we played lots of farmers markets in the beginning mm-hmm. yep. which is where we got our chops from right we can play for hours hmm. nonstop because uh, we played those markets, you know, with six songs and four hours wow. to kind of play with. You yeah, know? yeah. But because all I wanted to do was play, right? I put myself in situations where I was out of my depth. Yeah, yeah. And we learned. We learned how to how to improvise. We hmm. learned how to create songs on the spot. <laughs> to, you know, singing song. Um, Matakana markets. You know, staring up and you see this green door, and so we wrote a whole song 20 minutes long about a green door 20 minutes long well because you know <laughs> everybody who walks through a market they spend maybe about a half a minute with you right and if you can stop them this is what someone told me which i thought was really cool because i used to cry all the time <laughs> what, what, <laughs> that no what, one what? stopped no one stopped <laughs> i'm going to show you my heart and that, i think that's kind of like that um <laughs> i think that's that original open mic night artist yeah where you get two or three songs to play in the night and it is the night of your life right you are expressing yourself and everybody in that room has to stop yeah you know and it's like that movie moment yeah, you know yeah and they're gonna go shit she's good right and in a market man it teaches you how to be humble <laughs> they don't give a shit <laughs> They're getting their vegetables. And yeah. They've got their crying children. It's fucking seven o'clock in the morning and shut the fuck up. You know, but you learn that it's not about that. Right. You know, open mic nights were incredible. And I did a lot of them in Wellington and Auckland. Mm. But open, uh, I think when you're playing to an audience that really doesn't give a stuff, that's when you realize, are you doing it because you love it? Yeah. Or are you doing it because you love the reaction? Well, I learned a lot doing support slots mm. because, you know, they've paid a lot of money to see someone that's not you. Yeah. You know, and now they've yep. got to sit through you for 40 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I'm often the person in the audience going, oh, for fuck's sake. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Because I'm a horrendous audience member, you know, it's, it's it's something that doesn't make sense in the universe. Is I want everyone to like my bit, yeah, but I don't want to watch anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I'm, a, I'm an inexperienced audience member. Right. I prefer being on stage. Yeah, I so, really so do. do I. Or Absolutely. Off stage. Absolutely. Or man, that yeah. is the best view. Right. I don't like being in the crowd. No, I don't like, I don't having, like it. You know, I, and if yeah. I am, I like being in the VIP section. Exactly. <laughs> and I know that, and that's not because that sounds, it sounds wanky, but I prefer room. And no, it's space. not because it's, it's not because it's very important person. No, it's, it's because, because of, you, get of, you, got, you get space. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you get, a, you get a fatty paku. I like, I need to go to the toilet. I don't want to wait in line. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I would like a beverage. I don't want to wait 20 minutes. Like, <laughs> And I cool. don't want to have to pay for it. Yeah. Isn't it weird sometimes yeah. when you go out for a drink, just like on a normal <laughs> night and it. you forget you have to actually pay for it nah, <laughs> we just use the base payers cut as three days <laughs> but uh, yeah i remember like um i'm really waking up to that when i was doing support slots a lot and thinking okay i've got 35 minutes or something and if i play to myself as in if i was in the audience yeah. i would already be bored by now so what <laughs> so what can i do to get my yeah, own cool. attention you know yeah. what i mean and that's yeah. that's kind of when i started to figure out I can't go out on stage expecting the audience to like me for no reason. Yeah. I've got to find a way of engaging with yes, them. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I think that's what I learned uh, right, you know, through this process mm. and this project. I call it a project. It's bullshit. It's life. <laughs> yeah. This is my life. Yeah. This is my life. These are my friends. Mm-hmm. We play music to uh, to people I love. Yep. You know, and through through this part, portion of my life, I've learned 
how to perform and right. what works and what doesn't because you've played that song a thousand times. Yeah. Not the same way mm. because we're trying to find, trying to find when you engage people, you're trying to find the drop, you're fi- trying to find when they're losing interest yeah. and, and you can only, well, what we've done that through just doing it a lot. I mean, we do a version of brick in the wall and there's a re- the structure is seven years of doing that song. Right. And it's slowly evolved. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and we've just played it at every gig. So when you've been playing so many gigs, mm. how do you keep the songs fresh and, yeah. and inspired? Because it is hard sometimes. Very it's like, hard. Here we go again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Johnny, be good. <laughs> yeah. uh, oh! And and I mean, there. Are, when you're playing the same type of gigs, and that's why I think that people who do um, the pub gig circuit are just stallions. Yeah. Is for us when we played when we play a lot of weddings, mm. you find that the same songs hit. Yes, that's yeah. right. Yeah, and they're not really interested in creativity. No, and so when you play a lot of those, you can lose your mind a little <laughs> bit in some songs, and it, and it can get like I'm gonna stab someone in the neck. <laughs> And someone goes, someone goes, wagon wearing, and you're going, yes, what a great choice. But you turn around and you go, Udoy. I never wanted to sound like a bit of musician, but I feel kind of cool that I am. <laughs> you've I feel kind of cool that I earned that. You've earned it, yeah. yeah, yeah. But yeah. I think it's is that we turn into each other. Yeah. Is that when you have a team that you love and you turn to each other, mm. sometimes someone will do something different and you're yes. like, hey. But what about you as a singer engaging with the lyrics? You know, mm. when you've sung the song 300 million oh, times. Oh, God, I don't engage with the lyrics. No. <laughs> It's acting, I don't right? even know who Johnny is. Who the hell is Johnny? He plays a guitar. Congratulations. No. <laughs> no, I don't. I, I think it's, uh, I get it from the audience. Right. I get it from their reaction by watching what they're doing. I really feel them. Mm. I can really feel the whole room. Well, I think that's also a discipline. Because I'm interested, especially recently, I've been interested in the subject of the hobbyist versus the pro. Mm. And the hobbyist, and I mean that in no way in a condescending mm. way, you know, but the hobbyist is, or, or amateur player, is able to only play when they feel like it, mm. which to me is one of the big differences, you know. Yeah. Uh, today, I don't feel like it today. I won't yeah. play, whatever. I'll yeah. do it tomorrow. Yeah. Um, pick it up, having a moment of inspiration, play mm. for three hours. Yeah. You know, but a pro, they have to get there yep. whether or not they feel like Absolutely. it. Absolutely. You know, yep. no matter what kind of state your life is in, yep. your head is in, yep. your, your, your body. Your, your, yeah, you've got a migraine or you're exhausted or whatever, yep. you've got to step up and deliver. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and that, that to me is a, is a discipline that uh, I don't know if it's talked about very much. And I think, I think you learn that, I mean, you can learn that same discipline through going to work yeah. every day. Yeah. No matter how you feel, mm. you're going to work every single day and delivering that job right. that you have. And if you're a hobbyist, when, when I was a hobbyist, mm. I use that as my release. Yes. I use that as my happy space. My, yes my place to just disappear and in, into bliss and you lose that though when it becomes your job right ah uh, you lose the 100 percent of the time yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know when you're a hobbyist and you do it whenever you feel like yeah, it. today yeah. i don't feel like it um every time you played music it was bliss right every time you played music it felt amazing and incredible it was a great escape it was mm. oh, you know going to the open mic night that once every two months oh look at it. oh that's yeah. so cool and you relive that moment over and over again right whereas when you're doing it often you do, you're not always in that same state of mind right yeah, yeah. so yeah I, I say that you're you still have those moments of bliss mm. but they don't come from the stock standard i mean of what you do yeah. sometimes it's that you get to play with someone that you admire. Mm, yeah. You get to play for a bigger audience or you have a moment with a small audience or a person mm. or an event that you didn't know was going to happen yeah. and it blows you away. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So it comes from not just playing, it comes from the moments within that playing. Right. I've yeah. also found the answer to that by just doing other things in music. Yeah. You know, like I I like playing classical guitar yeah. and I've never once been paid to play classical guitar. Yeah. That's kind of my thing. I do yeah. it on my own by myself. No mm. one ever hears me play it. Um, it's a w- great way of improving my skill as a player, yeah. but it's also just mine, you yeah, know, and, yeah. and, and I play that for the same reason I played when I was a kid and I first mm. started, you know, mm. um, and that's, and I, and it doesn't feel any way connected to what I do professionally. Yeah. Different, different guitar, you know, I think different I need discipline. to do that. I mean, find something. That's, that's a cool idea. Or like, 
you know, sometimes you just say yes to something. Mm. There might not be any money in it, but you like the people and yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah. You just go and do something else, you know? I think I have, uh, I have the privilege of having a lot of time outside of music. Right. Where I can do stuff that I would like to do. Financially, I feel very happy. Yep. Um, I'm still working towards my mill. Um, <laughs> And I know I'm going to get it. Yep. Um, and that's the same as when we started the project Whitechapel Jack. I knew it was going to be good. Right. I knew it. Yeah. So I know I'm going to get the mill. So I'm not going to sweat that. Um, <laughs> uh, but it's a. I, I think I'm enjoying the space because I just spent, you know, my 20s and 30s working. Yeah. Working, working. Do working. you feel like you just? Uh, is it a sensation of you've finally started living? Is it yes. something to that extreme? Freedom. Yep. Yeah, living. Freedom. Yeah. 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 So my, you know, the, uh, I, I call Whitechapel Jack my life, I, my my living, mm. I, you know, I do things that I love to do and I make money doing it. Right. But then there's this really cool offshoot to it, which is that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesdays, Thursdays, sometimes. I mean, we've only got one gig this week, which is weird. Yeah. Because we've worked on increasing the income and decreasing the volume. Yes, right. And doing shows that we would like to do. Mm. And that's weird. So I've got to, I mean... I got a cool week. Yeah. And I went out paddleboarding with my wife and my dog. Yep. Uh, this morning went to the dog park. Mm-hmm. And when I go home, I don't know, maybe I'll do a Netflix series. So, you know, there's still lots to do in the band, but because we have people doing it um, and it's kind of like the peak season. So you're kind of riding that, you know, riding all that work that you did in winter and yep. free stuff. And then now we're starting to plan for the next year. Mm hmm. But we're taking just some time to be human. Right. Um, it's really cool. It's, well, it's the but, best lifestyle. Well, it's interesting because I'm, I'm always rattling on on the show about how uh, people are so focused in society on hitting certain marks and earning, mm. earning a certain salary and yeah. buying the house and, you know, all the obvious stuff. Um, but they don't seem to talk that much about how they spend their time. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and 40 years can pass of just misery. Oh my God. But you got the fucking house. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and it just occurred to me as you were talking just then that we have the term making a living. Yeah. But we talk about making a living in terms of money. Yeah. Not in in, in how we are actually living. (laughs) Yeah. You know? And like I was talking to someone recently about uh, they were they're unhappy in their job and I was saying, well, why don't you consider maybe going down to four days a week? Mm. Can you live off that? Mm. Maybe just having that extra day off will mm. um will give you a bit more balance and you can do some other project stuff or whatever. Yeah. Um, it's scary when you're connected to the machine. Yeah. Because the machine tells you that you cannot live without this money. The That's machine right. makes you rely on the income, rely on the lifestyle, rely on the self-esteem that you get from the position that you have earned, yes. you know, over those years. And it's really, really, really difficult as someone who has disconnected from the sh- machine, yeah, but yeah. also being very, very in it. It's also the, it's the, a the, the big per- step. It's the perception of security too. Oh my gosh. Because yes. someone could look at you guys and mm. go, well, where's Whitechapel Jack going to be in 10 years? Oh, yeah, and, and it could be huge or it could be nowhere. We don't know. But also, you don't know either. Mm. You and your salary job, you yeah. know, you yeah. might be bankrupt. I mean, I'm not bankrupt. You might be redundant tomorrow. Well, there's the perception of security, yeah. you know, which is what the machine wants you to know. Right. Is that you you are safe here and secure. Yeah. And as long as you stick with us, we'll take care of you. But mm. I think, I think, I, you know what? I don't even have a five-year plan or ten-year plan because you're told to have it when you're in corporate because yes. you're always working towards something. Like right. Where you are now is not where you're supposed to be. That's right. You're always working towards this and towards that. And I think with Whitechapel Jack, it's like, yeah, cool. I'd like to do that next. Mm. It's not we have to get that next. No. In order to earn a million dollars, we have to do that. I don't say that. It's like I have always lo- – I, I am going to play in front of 100,000 people. Right. That's my ultimate goal. Yeah. And I don't even care – in what form? Right. I just know that when I do it, it will be amazing. Yeah. I just yeah. I just know that. I know that that's what's going to happen. But you're focusing on experiences. Yes. Which is what I'll be life a millionaire is. Millionaire, then I'm a <laughs> bloody rich. But but, it, but again, but, it comes down to how you spend your time. Yes. You know, and and, and I, enjoying the journey. Yeah. It's it's about today. This is the only moment that's real. Right. Today is the only moment, and all those other moments is just something you've done, and then something that you believe you're yes, going to do. That's right. Yeah. But if I if the only thing that I can control is my pers- is is what I think is going to happen, yeah. well, I'm going to choose something amazing. Exactly. I'm not going to choose. Oh, that's not going to work out. I, it's not to say that I don't have fears, mm. 
but I tell those fears to fuck off. Exactly. Well, it's still come because there's so much uncertainty in life anyway. Oh, I mean, yeah. you get everything right and then you get hit by a bus. You know, yeah. the, the age old yes, idea. Exactly. You know, so why not make the most of it? Yeah. You know, and I think, yeah. and I think, I, I feel like I've really cracked it in the sense that. I came from, you know, a very corporate, well, not very corporate, that sounds really dicky. I came from a poor upbringing, right. a loving upbringing, but a poor upbringing, mm. and then moved, first first f- f- person to go to varsity, mm. and then moved into making money, yep. and did really well at it, and, and earned the most that I think any family member of mine has ever earned right. before in their lives, but then still wasn't fulfilled yes. in who I was. And music was always that for me. Yeah. But it was, I was told right at the beginning, that's not going to work for you. Yeah. 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 And even I had still had to fight my demons. My voice is not good enough. My performance is not good enough. My guitar playing is not good enough. Right. But it... That's because I believed in that there's going to be a, a discovery moment. So yeah. you're going to get your big break. And at the mm. moment, you're not good enough for your big breaks. So why even try? Also, you you it's easy to get swept up in, in everyone else's sort of romanticized story. Mm. You know, I mean, I, um, I, who was it? I can't remember who the band was, but there was a band some years ago that started it was a big American band mm. and they started recording right off the desk, all of their gigs and just putting them up on the website and mm. just like download them, enjoy them, whatever. Mm. Um, and I had a live album of theirs that was phenomenal. Mm. Then I listened to one of these, these ones off the desk. And I was like, Jesus, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's ropey as fuck, you know? <laughs> and of course we all know that all that live albums are edited yeah. and often overdubbed and fixed and corrected yeah. and whatever. Yeah. You're never really hearing the live show, yeah. you know? Um, and it's also very hard. I mean, there could have actually been an amazing show in the moment, yeah. but the way it's captured on a recording doesn't necessarily translate the energy, you know? Yeah. Um, but it, what it made me also realize is that, uh, or remember at least, is that these guys are human. You know, they don't get all the notes in tune. Mm. You know, they don't not make mistakes. Mm. I've even seen some of my favorite artists in the world make big mistakes. Yeah. And I was like, yes. Because <laughs> in that moment, though, eh? Yeah. In that moment, you're with them. Yeah. 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 It's not so polished, but it never is. No, that's right. It never is. Yeah. And who cares? Yeah. Does it feel good? Exactly. You know? Yeah. Is yeah. it feeling good to you? Does that feel good? Does it really matter if that note was slightly off? Or does right. it really matter? It does when you reflect back and you listen to the <laughs> recording and you want to do a, you know, a live album to it. Yeah. 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 Because you don't want to relive that moment every well, time. But I, in the moment, it's amazing. I always use Aretha Franklin as an example. Because mm. if you listen to uh, a lot of her recordings, she's not staying on the mic and her pictures are around all over the place. And, you know, but it's so sassy and there's mm. you know, so much character and attitude in it yeah um that it just doesn't matter yeah you know and it's actually to the point now where i hear stuff that's been like conventionally recorded in a, a especially for like tv shows and movies and things and it's so it's so edited yeah and it's so tuned and it's i, I so just heartless it's eh? boring yeah i just want to change the channel yeah yeah and i think um when we're on the road and listening to our disney band <laughs> podcasts and <laughs> and audiobooks <laughs> and listening to like uh, we, we did Jimmy Barnes together as a band and wow, you know, how cool is his auto, you know, his book is just like, oh. I haven't read his book. I listen because I'm, I'm not much of a reader. <laughs> right. So this whole audio book thing is amazing. Yeah. And I feel like I can have conversations with people yeah, who, have, yeah. have, who have read books. <laughs> like I have also read that book, you know, with my ears. <laughs> yeah. um, but the cool thing too is, is that what a just listening to people's journeys yeah. changes everything it isn't polished it no. isn't you know they didn't know they tripped over they fucked up That's they right. missed that opportunity oh my god they could have been way bigger than they are yeah. and it, was he that wasted at that show <laughs> wow he did well you know we, we did a gig supporting Jimmy Barnes years ago and, yeah. and he was I think he was sober by that point yeah. um, but he had a pretty rough go before that and yeah. um, he was really nice and everything but he goes up on stage to sound check and the first thing he does, he just does this massive Scream. wail, just whoa, yeah, 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 kind yeah. of thing. And um, and then he he stopped and he bent over and he coughed for ten minutes. <laughs> just, <laughs> now it, just, it. Yeah. sound check done. <laughs> <laughs> now it. <laughs> it's like this guy's hilarious. Like what a great performer. Oh no, mm. I, I really didn't know much about artists or <laughs> music. I just know the way that it felt. And it's really cool to get to know everybody. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. mean, the boys introduced me to the music that they love, which widens my right. my knowledge. I still believe that, that 
you probably have an advantage with you with your band because mm. you haven't uh, fallen back into the same old mistakes or same moves as everybody else, you know. Mm. And I really think that that is the key, mm. you know. And we don't necessarily have a theme to this podcast yeah, yeah. so much just because it's yeah. just more about people's stories and whatever. Yeah. Um, but if there was any kind of theme or advice or whatever, I think that you guys have sort of ticking all the boxes mm. of what a band should do. Ah, thank you. Know, you. Just, just think about it in your own terms, <laughs> you know, follow – uh, you know, keep the business going, but follow the passion. You know mm. what I mean? It, it, to me, it's just what you're talking about is so sensible, <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't. Su- year old and, and, it, <laughs> and it doesn't surprise me that it's working because it, it's a it's a formula that makes sense that it would work. You know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we're yeah. Very, we're very very proud of what we have achieved and what we're achieving. We're right. super proud of what we're doing. Yeah. Because we're so new to it. None of us has been in bands that are, you know, do what we're doing now. None right. of us. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's such a cool journey. Yeah. And um, doing it together with a group of people that, that I'm doing it with, uh, they really make what we do special yeah i mean there's no point i mean i love being on the road i mm. actually really enjoy it mm. i mean because i was stuck in retail outlets and corporate offices for like oh I, i'm like is this what it feels like to be out in the world look at this you know and so it's still a very cool thing to be on the road even yeah. i mean we all travel in um in a, in a Hilux truck. Oh yeah, yeah, yep. and all of our gear fits in the back of it, and <laughs> uh, we've even got a double bass case uh, that <laughs> that our bass player's um, father made. He he makes wooden boats. He made this super cool thing that goes on top. So then everyone stares at us because, like, you know. Well, on top of the truck. Yeah. The double base goes up on the roof. Yeah. So there's this really cool case. It's all waterproof, made of plywood and bent and shaped and amazing. And it pops up in there because it took too much room up at the back. So our PA will play to about three, four hundred people. Yeah. Along with our instruments, and it all fits in one truck. And we, f- I mean, because we don't have a drum kit, right? Exactly. No, that's yeah. That's yeah. what I'm laughing about. Yeah. One more reason why yeah. the formula is great. And but that thing must be heavy as fuck. No, it's light. I mean, yeah. It's plywood though, the size of a double bass. It is twelve kg, seventeen kgs. No. Yeah. With the, with the bass in is it? it? That can't be the right. The bass is light. My pedal board is like twenty one kgs. No. <laughs> Maybe I made that number up. I think you did. I can lift it. Maybe you stand too close to the exhaust fumes when, you, <laughs> when you're putting it up. I can lift it, but I don't because there's boys in the band. And I'll pull out my, I love, I, I am a strong woman that can lift shit myself, but I'm like, you go. This isn't a gender thing. Nah, fuck it. It's you do it. Yeah. I don't think I could lift a fucking double bass in a plywood case. Oh, we, yeah. Well, you know, um, and I think, <laughs> I think we are very equal in that sense. Right. Yeah. We are all very, I don't know, bass player is so skinny. Fuck, he can, I don't even know how he can lift his shit. But we are all very capable yeah. human beings. Right, right. Yeah. But I do like them lifting heavy stuff because I can't be asked. So so as a final question, mm. um, now that we've recorded this, how many times are you going to make the band listen to it on the road? <laughs> <laughs> should, should we listen to my episode? <laughs> Do you guys, I don't know if you remember um, three minutes and 32 seconds in when I mentioned, do you remember that? Oh my God. I think that was life changing for everybody. You start quoting yourself. I remember this one time when I said. At uh, 4.21, um, it's a great story. Um, (laughs) At least we've got something new to talk about. I've got to stop myself from doing that actually, because I'm so paranoid about repeating myself. Now to, now as, now as a kind of a a disclaimer, I sometimes go, I once said on the podcast and it's, I think it comes across the wrong way, you know, like. I think yeah. I've told these stories so many times <laughs> that everybody who's ever had a conversation with me is going to go, Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, has she yeah. got a new one or what? <laughs> oh, yes, inspirational, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's been so great having you on. Yeah, thank uh, you having for you having on. me. Yeah, yeah and it's, it's been um, very fun. And it's been cool to, to get it together and, yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, thank yeah. you. And all the best going forward. Yay. Yeah, let me know when you make the mill. Yeah, too. Sure. <laughs>